buckle up, Buttercup. Live from Gloucester, Massachusetts. Podcasting around the world. Around the world. You're listening to the Gloucester Cast Podcast, a production of Joey Shimataro and Good Morning Gloucester Media. Kick back, relax, and enjoy the show with your host, Joey Shimataro, and his crew of Merry Castaways. No piping clovers will be intentionally harmed in the production of this podcast. We're back. We're here. We made it. Are we live? We're live, baby. Woo! Clean it up, fellas. With the... We we have the Legends of Gloucester Hockey... We, um, we've been told uh, by um, several people that to, to you we've used the term legends loosely, um, but we're joined with, by uh, Barry Clifford up in the, the uh, top right. Next to him, Jerry Olson. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Jimmy Douglas, Gappa Frontero, bottom left, Steve McDonald. And Ray D'Amico, hey guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. thanks for being thank here, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Good job. I'll tell you, um, I've we've done this is our 465th podcast, and I'm not sure if there's been one that's been more anticipated uh, that I've got more feedback ahead of time on than this particular one. I think um, it struck a chord, sub the subject matter, and. Um, a little background. I think it was last Friday or Saturday. Um, it was two o'clock in the morning, and I shot up out of bed. And my wife kind of was like, "What's the matter? What's the matter?" I said, "I got this thing about Gloucester hockey back in the late seventies, early eighties, and it just kind of snowballed." Think I was trying to think if there had been anything in Gloucester sports history that came anywhere close to the electricity, the excitement of that, of Talbot Rink in that era. Um, I know, I I mean, I'm going to let you guys talk. I I don't really want to talk too much, but I just wanted to set it up. And then I got a hold of um, uh, Jimmy helped me out a lot. Barry helped me out a lot. Gappa with the photos. Um, and just talking to people, I, and I and I said I wanted guys that had stories to tell, and and all your names kept coming up over and over again from all the different people I I, um, I spoke with. So I'm really honored to have you guys uh, with us tonight. Good character reference, and I mean character. Well, thank you, Joe. <laughs> hey, um, Joe, Joe, we should probably set the record straight on this legend thing before we go any further. All right. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right, so legendary status can be That's obtained that. in numerous ways, and some of us have obtain, obtained it maybe off the ice or in the locker room. All right, Stevie McDonald, he's in that legend talk. The rest of us, we're, we're, we're along for the ride and maybe uh, earned our accolades otherwise. So <laughs> let's, let's just be clear about that. I'm watching right. it, too, just like you guys. I'd agree, Barry. Most of our uh, legendary stuff was done off the ice. <laughs> uh, as, today. as customary, what we normally do on the podcast is we, uh, especially the nighttime ones, we, we everybody tells what with it, what they're drinking. I happen to be drinking Ryan and Wood. Uh, there we go. Malt whiskey. That's my uh, drink of preference. What are you guys drinking tonight? I'm I'm about to switch up from the Tito's Joe, and I'm gonna head on over to the Slane. There you go, Gappa. I got uh, the body armor. I'm sober, so. Uh, Jimmy, we didn't ask you. What are you drinking? I'm going from the Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee over to the Tito's here. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Stevie and Ray. Knob Creek. We got a little Knob Creek here with a bear shooter. Nice. Very nice. 
Uh, I want to hear from uh, from the people out in the, in the uh, studio t- audience over here. What, what are you guys are drinking? Type it in. We'd like to hear what you guys are drinking as well. Um, well, you know, after, now that we have the whole Legends thing out of the way, Barry, I wanted you guys and uh, Barry and Jimmy, I want you guys to get pay homage to some of the, the actual real greats of Gloucester hockey. Could you guys speak to that? Sure, Joe. I, I'll, I can start off. Um, you know, the first name that comes to mind, and there's a relation between all of us, is our head hockey coach, Don Riley. Simply, you know, one of the greatest. And, um, you know, beyond that, Dwight Montgomery, who I played with, fortunate enough to play with in 78 and 79. Um, of course, you know, my brother Stevie Douglas, one of the best players ever to play <laughs> GHS. And I was talking to Eddie Curry, too, and he wanted me to bring up some of the older guys from the 60s. And he threw out a couple of names besides Donnie Riley. was uh, John Burnett, who was a goalie at the time. I guess he was a phenomenal goalie. Um, Gino Barrett, Eddie mentioned, along with uh, Tommy Babson, who went on to play, I think Eddie said, at D.C., and uh, one other former coach Eddie brought up was Dana Norton. There you go. I think we'd be uh, remiss not to mention uh, Punky Smith, obviously, right? So you, you you ask any hockey person, you know, to name their top five greatest of all time, and unanimously you're going to hear Donnie Riley's name, Punky Smith's name, and, and Stevie Douglas's name. Um, and, and then from there you can start getting into the the, the, the – Debates about who fills out the top five, top ten, but certainly Mo, um, uh, right up there. Um, you know, Matty Meniz, um, so we hear names like Alan Feener, we hear names like uh, Mario Orlando, uh, Daryl Seppala, um, yeah, absolutely, um, Eric Gary. Yeah, well, you got let it rip right now, guys, because I want, I want, I want to give props to these guys, you know, better than me, Paul Meniz. Yeah. Uh, I mean the, the state championship yeah, ship teams state, back in the nineties, early nineties. Tommy Sala, Tommy, Tommy Sala. Um, you know, ninety three had a lot of good players too. I think that was a state championship team, I believe. Right. Going, but going back to Jimmy's Jimmy's years, uh, Aaron Trefry, obviously tremendous Aaron hockey Fry. player, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and then those teams from the mid nineties, they had some some fantastic players and scorers. You know. Mario Orlando, Daryl Seppala, um, you know, uh, Mike Interanti between the pipes. Interanti was, um, that guy was a great goalie. Absolutely. Tremendous, tremendous talents. Yep. There you go. Well, I just want to – I wanted to make sure that we we didn't think that uh, – we, we, Nick Novello, uh, we, 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 uh, we don't want to leave – you know, we wanted to be inclusive here, but I just wanted to get that out of the way. And, and, and if I had the technology – I would have put 20 guys on, but we really – it would have made a mess out of this whole podcast. So we wanted to keep yeah. it keep it tight. Um, so we also wanted to pay homage to to, uh, to, to some guys that have passed. Uh, assistant coach Paul Riley, Mo Montgomery, and Alan Fina, to be, uh, to be, to be uh, precise. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All, all Gloucester hockey greats. Have a toast to those guys. Yeah. 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 Raise yeah. them up. Raise them up. Here's to you, boys. You know, and, and unfortunately, Joe, two of those guys were in very recent memory. Um, and then Alan was just a, a few short years ago. And, you know, those of us on this podcast um, played with all of them, uh, whether it was in high school or, or after high school in the adult leagues. And, uh, you know, they were, they were true friends. So uh, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul coached all of us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You know, here's uh, to him. Yep, Paul's a, Paul a great man. He was great a great guy. guy, great mentor growing yeah. up. And uh, yeah. him and Donnie together were uh, just phenomenal for us as coaches. Yeah. yeah. Mogi and Spice you know, were just huge. I mean, I named my dogs after him. It's uh, oh, yeah. wild, you know. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> I didn't know that. And Spice, and Spice, you got hit by a car. And Elon put it on Facebook, and uh, they called Brett down the store. I said, Jesus, Spice got hit by a car. Is he all right? I told when I told Spice I named my dog after him. I'm pretty sure he cried. 
<laughs> I go, I go, Kappa, what are you on drugs? I'm like, no, I said, this is from Moog after your brother and Spice got hit and blah, blah, blah. He, I think he cried for a second. He might have thought he was out in the boat. I don't know. Yeah. I love those guys. Mo, Mo was, uh, Mo was Mo, I think Mo was the best defenseman I've yeah. ever seen. I, I love to go watch him. That's who I idled growing up, going to all the games and couldn't wait to get to high school after watching him and all you guys play in the late seventies, you know, it got yeah. the juices flowing, but Mo think- was unbelievable. I think you took his number too, right? You wore yeah. the same jersey. Yep. It was he just was so smooth yeah. skating, Stevie. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. Like I said, it is um, his service there on the boat. It was like poetry in motion, watching him skate. Okay, you know? didn't know how fast he was going until he went by you. Yep. My, uh, my father-in-law, Buzzer Foley, who, who, uh, who played for Salem State, I'm he said, the hottest hit I ever took at high school and collegiate level was from Donnie Lowe during the state tournament at the Boston Arena. 1968. I was on Queer Street Street for a week. (laughs) Yeah, but he didn't miss any games, so he played all the games. You know, I I don't think any of us ever saw saw Donnie uh, Donnie Lowe play or 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 coached with with him or by him. But um, in the last week or so, I've heard his name repeatedly come up um, about how how great of a player he was. So you know, little tip of the hat and homage to Donnie Lowe as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a side note there, Joe, both he and Donnie Riley played together at UMass after they left Gloucester. So. Oh, wow. That's oh, crazy. Yeah. But you know how Donnie, Donnie could manage I mean, it with one hand. He just, even in practice, you know, we'd take me and Ray or whoever it was and just throw us aside with one hand. Only a few guys can do that. Douglas can do it. Stevie Douglas. Yeah. You turn your head around, and you, you know, with one hand and score with the other. But, uh, <laughs> you know, him and Riles just – that's it, the difference, you know. It just manhandled everybody. Yeah. It's yeah. funny you say, it, Gapper. I was, I was thinking about that the other day, and uh, playing in the in the industrial league, the adult league. Um, Donnie Riley, Steve Douglas, and yep. Mo Montgomery all came to mind. Yep. If they had the puck and they didn't want you to have it, you didn't nope. stand a chance. If no, you had just, it, just give right. up. If you had it and they wanted it, they got it. Or you just no it. chance. <laughs> You yep. guys also, you guys also, when we were talking the, and the, during the week leading up to this, you also said that it was incredible that that you had Donnie Riley as a coach that was a better uh, skater than all of you guys on the ice at, at any given time. Absolutely, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, and in uh, the best shape of all of us as well. Yeah, you know. yeah. he could shoot righty or lefty; it didn't matter. Yeah, yeah, he was. He's yeah, still in better that. shape than all of us. Yeah. That's maybe Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> how old? Hey, how old was Donnie when we were uh, playing? Uh, Anyone know? What's that? How old, how old was, was he? Donnie, when he was coach. Uh, that was forty. So how long? Twenty six, I think. Twenty five or twenty six when he was coach. I was going to say he had to be about 26, 27, oh, 28. Was, oh, it's a young kid. Yeah. Wow. yeah, he was young. Hey, That's so good. talking about. Donnie Riley and Paul Riley as coaches, I've got this vivid memory, and they worked us like dogs in a good way, right? But I have believed every day of my life since we left high school that we were one of the best-conditioned teams in in the conference and and in the state. And I think it earned us some victories that otherwise might have been up for the right? But my memory is doing sprints at the end of practice, and Paul Riley – just had this shitty grin. His eyes were like, you know, like like shot, laughing his balls off, blowing his whistle, telling us to do it again. Do oh, it yeah. again. You know? And blue line back, red line blue back. Blue line back. Red line back. Boards to boards. Yeah. And they were the practice with no pucks. They took, <laughs> they took great joy in skating us. And, and, uh, yeah. And, it, and, but we all, we all got into it. We all bought into the program. Yeah. Do you think he got that from the movie Miracle? When, uh, remember that great scene? Oh, yeah. um, Kurt Russell? Yeah. Again, yeah. Again, yeah. again. Again. I think Herb Brooks learned that from Paul Riley. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, speak of the devil, look who we got here. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Little surprise oh, for you, guys. All right. You know, I thought this was Gloucester Legends. <laughs> Who are these guys I see here? What? What is this? Some kind of joke? Hey, wow! <laughs> Lunch pail legends. Loosely right. used right. the ice. Oh, legends well, it's great to have you. Legendary Don Riley just joined us. This is a little surprise for everybody. 
<laughs> wow. thanks, thanks for joining us, Donnie. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, giving me the invite there, Joe. I'd love to hear what these guys have to say all the time. Well, I'll tell you, like, if if, if the, the studio audience had to hear what we had to say before we pressed the go live button, <laughs> we'd probably be pulled off the air. <laughs> oh, so, guys. So, Tony, Tony started all that shit live. He started first hand. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so Donnie, what, what, can you give a little background on your your hockey career? Where did you like? I, like, what level did you get to? Well, I started on Dave's Pond on double runs. <laughs> That's right, Sal. Dave's Pond. Yep. And then I tried to progress from there, but uh, it's yeah, my my career. You know, it, it was fun. I had a lot of fun playing hockey. Played the. the Pretty high level, um, good team at UMass, Division Two champs, and everything. That was fantastic. Um, got a cup of coffee with the, the team, uh, the, the, uh, the Seals, right? the Golden Seals. That did oh, yeah. long, yeah. Um, but hockey's been good to me. Still trying to, still trying to lace them up every once in a while. <laughs> What 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 are you what were your, some of your favorite teams, Donnie? Uh, every team I had was special, and uh, you know, great bunch of guys, uh, long lasting friends, yeah, lifelong friends I've made, and uh, they're all special, Joe. Okay, all right, that's hey, the diplomatic. That's the diplomatic answer. So uh, some of us are a little more special than others. <laughs> Who's that, who's that upside down there? I can't even see him. That would be Gappa Frontero. <laughs> Am I hanging on? You are. I don't know how to make these things work. <laughs> Donnie, Donnie, yeah. what do you do? You, what do you, do you? Would you agree with me that the years between '78 and '83, when Talbot Arena was just overstuffed to the gills? Were kind of were the, would you agree that those are kind of special years as far as the um, popularity of hockey in Gloucester? Oh, they were definitely uh, special years for me. I know that. Um, yeah, when you got that place filled to capacity and people standing around down the corners of the rink and stuff, and you got Winthrop coming to town and uh, you're playing on uh, just before Christmas or just before New Year's on the weekend. And the place is rocking, and they're throwing golf balls that year, and it's and it was it was an exciting place to be, and it, and it was tough to get in. They they be capacity at the, yeah. at the rink, and, yeah. And I, I try to tell these kids now that you know skating that they don't know what they have here with having this rink. I mean. The amount of ice time that they get and all of that, it's just its just fantastic. Um, we didn't get quite as much as they get now, but uh, the, we got enough, I would say. Matter of fact, I, can, <laughs> I think a few of the boys will remember the practice I had on Christmas morning. <laughs> Who wants to take that one? <laughs> Johnny, was that the one with no pucks? Uh, no, I think we had to work on the power play to go. <laughs> it was it was optional though. But we were all there though. That's right. <laughs> we wouldn't miss that. Oh boy. Which team went further, the seventy eight team or the eighty three team? Uh eighty three was in the state, so did did seventy eight make the states? No. no eighty three went further. We went further. Yeah, yeah well, eighty three had a terrific record, but we were one and done in the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah lost Watertown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mer- at Merrimack. Yeah, yeah. still fries, still fries my ass. <laughs> we got stonewalled by uh, is it Sean Real? I believe. Yeah, yeah. Kid that went to BC, the goalie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a couple goalies that, that that I remember. Jay Staples. Oh yeah, Saugus. Yeah, he was, attitude. He, he was a good. He was a good goalie. Yeah, and, but but Donnie, a question I had for you was: 
if if so if the people that are watching this right now if they remember so i'll just give as a fan's perspective like this is the hottest ticket in town you got if you got in you're lucky and the chance the, the building felt like it was alive the stomping on the on the on the on the, the wooden stands and the the all the different chants that they had how did you get these guys to focus on hockey with the mayhem, like the throwing the throwing fish on the ice, golf balls, batteries, tennis balls. How did you guys get these? How did you get these guys focused on on playing hockey? Uh, it was uh, it was a chore, I would say, but I think they bought into it right away. And you know, I give them a lot of credit for what for them keeping their heads on straight. We had a couple guys that would might get out of line every once in a while, but um, we had a, we had a pretty, pretty good group. You know, we, we'd always come over, they'd come over to my house there after school. Oh yeah. Or a game. Yeah. And we'd have the, uh, the tea and honey and uh, yeah. the English muffins with uh, peanut butter. And yep. then we'd do a, uh, our uh, hypnosis and relaxation and visualization. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Hypnosis. Visualization. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it all works. You know, it all works. That's that's part of the game, I guess. Now. It, yeah. You know, but it's not not to interrupt, but but speaking for the '83 team, we had a crew that just bought into the program. Right. It was a good, good collection of guys. But we had three really strong leaders, captains. And Stevie Mack was one, and Phil Gigoloni was one, and Brandy Fennessy was the other one. And and they they corralled us. They they were they were true leaders and, and they made us buy into the program and kept us focused. So, you know, I want to really acknowledge um, the three of them because I, I think they fostered an environment where you know, we didn't get sidetracked. We bought into the program and we were ready to go come come game time. I'll tell you something like from a, and and that, that's why you know I I really wanted to make this happen was because I I just can't I can't even imagine any uh, 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 the way they packed that arena I don't think they could ever pack that arena the way they packed it back then I don't think they would allow it um and what was what was it like for you guys as players I mean how how what and, and, and I, I like a, a, a two part question. I'm going to go around. I want everybody to answer this. What was it like for you guys as players? And what were the, for you personally, what were your, what were your biggest rivalries? Which towns did you absolutely hate? Uh, Joe, 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 Joe. Depending on what year it was. Yeah. First of all, time out. Hate is the wrong word. So many, that, that's get blown out of proportion and I can't stand it. I'm still coaching now and I coach. And we played Danvers in uh, field hockey, and they hate us, and we hate – and that's baloney. You don't hate these kids. You okay. go to school with them later on in, in college and stuff, and you can become best friends and stuff. Yeah. That word hate, I mean, there's a rivalry, yes, you hate to lose to them, but, you you know, to say you hate an opponent, I, I don't agree with that at all. Okay. All right. That's just my point. I mean, and, the, and the way I was brought up and, you know – Hey, you play somebody, you play hard, the game's over. That's what shake it is. Hand, you shake their hands. Joey, but, Joey, that's why he's one of the greatest, because he's still teaching us life lessons today. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I can see how he can say that as a coach, but I, I, I felt like there was a, there was an intense intense rival. Okay, we, can, no, if we, oh, is it, it okay if we, we, we rephrase it into, like, who are the biggest rivalries? I think like, for Andrews. Davis, Davis, Winthrop, yep. Saugus, Marblehead. Yeah. Those are big oh, I, hate, I hated Marblehead. Bobo Roll and the coach, we used to have some battles. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think, Stevie, didn't you go play with uh, somebody from Marblehead in college? Okay. Yeah, uh, Joe Lonnie. Yeah, right. Became Joe friends. 
And you didn't yeah. him in, co- in college or anything, but M- Maddie played with him at Holy Cross and uh, oh, played yeah. against him a couple times. And him and Maddie became best friends. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Raj, you, you might remember uh, Ray Damaris from Lynn Classical, all, Lynn's all-time leading scorer. Yeah. He played. He played with me at, uh, yes, at New England, and I got him in my phone contacts. You right. know, we're best friends. We golf in the summertime together. It's like you say, it's it's endless. Right. That's great. Yeah. Can we talk about the fact that Jimmy Douglas played at the collegiate level? Oh, my God. <laughs> he didn't play in high school. How does that happen? <laughs> hey, I get a feeling there might be a college story we're going to hear at some point tonight, too. I think everybody's heard that. We don't need to hear that again. <laughs> I, was, I will tell these guys, Riles, I was telling these guys the other night that uh, yeah. when I went to Bridgewater for, a year, for the year and I made that team, I actually called Donnie Riley before I called my father to tell him I made the team. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> what did, hey, Jimmy, what did Donnie say? You're kidding me. <laughs> he said, who's, who's this? <laughs> All right. I want to hear some stories. So give me some stories about Lynn Arena. Who wants to tell oh, a story about going oh, to play at Lynn oh, Arena? Awesome, oh. Lynn Arena. Remember the game we, we played them in the uh, in the playoff. Were you guys there for the playoffs? And uh, the Andrew Davis, he yeah. hit, he scored the goal, and they said it was no goal. When it in and out so fast, it hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We still, we still Hickey, beat him though. Pete Hickey, we put him on. Donnie, remember putting him on the power play? Up yeah, up in front of the net. He's like six two two thirty in high school. Nobody could move him out. Yep, just stand right there. Just stand right there. If you get a shot on that, he was going to bang a rebound. You remember the play we set up with him? We gave it to him behind the net. He did the no look pass out front to Maddie, and the kid had yep. the full net to put it in. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. That place was awesome. The old barn. That place. Was, yeah. yeah. Remember they were throwing, uh, the fans were throwing uh, batteries and golf balls oh, and whatever the, else on the, the ice. wire around the uh, boards. It used to be insane. <laughs> Who was up? That was okay. a too, that a lot of schools, a lot of high schools around the whole area played there. Oh, yeah. Both yeah. Like Saturday, you'd have, you'd have seven or eight games, one after another. Yeah. Yeah, you could go there at noontime and watch hockey right till 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, it was awesome. That is awesome. But uh, do, someone was telling me a story. I forget. I don't know if it was Mr. Gigoloni, but they was telling well, me he that. He tells a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> But he was telling me a story that was an away game. And I'm not sure if it was Winthrop or and 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 uh, you guys. It was a heated heated rivalry game. Came out. It might have been Gappa, and the, all the windows in the bus was smashed out. Mm. That wasn't one of our years. No, yeah, no. Like, sounds like one of his stories. No, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, that's before our time. That wasn't. What, we didn't have that. No. Remember back then we had you had to get twenty six points to qualify. Oh yeah, for the turn it was it yeah, was seventy five percent of your uh, games. Yeah, we were yeah. 11, 11, 4, and two one year. We didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that was seventy eight. Yeah, and then no, uh, eighty one too. When we, uh, I think we missed it by a couple of points there. Four we points. we won the. Uh, the conference championship we beat Winthrop and Davis, but we only ended up with twenty four points and right. we yep. didn't we and those games those out. games didn't count. Yep. Yeah. Imagine that. And we that's were that's we were games of the year. We, were, we would have done some damage, I think, we would have right. had a good chance, you know. Yeah. What uh what was it like playing like when uh, that uh, industrial league is absolutely legendary. How like it, it must have been pretty wild to play with, uh, to you know, be in high school and play with guys that were twenty years older than you. That it's just, it was just such a legendary league. Do they do they play anymore? I think they do, but I'm not sure how many teams they have. Yeah, yeah it's different now. That's for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah. No. So so we got so I, so I I gave you guys an assignment. I don't know how many of you you read it, but we're gonna. I wanted to talk about who were who was the who had the biggest shot? Number one. Who was the bit? Who was the, the the most? Who was the sniper? And who was the toughest? And who was the best goalie? And biggest shot know, I ever played with was I probably P- Peter Hickey. Peter Hickey's shot, no doubt. Peter Hickey's shot from the point was probably the 
Yeah. yeah. Uh, nastiest blast. Uh, remember our game against Marblehead when we were down 5-3 up in our rink? 70, I think it was my senior year, 70. No, it might have been 78. And uh, we were down 5-3. Aaron DeFry wins the faceoff back to uh, Peter, and he let that shot go. The puck went in and out of the net before anybody moved in the faceoff. <laughs> we came back and ended up winning the game 7-5. Yeah. It was a huge game. And like I said, I think that puck would end up in the Mill River if it didn't go in the net. That's how hard he <laughs> shot the friggin' puck. Thank God he didn't shoot like you, Douglas. He would have broke the glass every year. <laughs> he would have hit the glass on the net. <laughs> I'd say Mo, Hick, Hick and Moe, too. Mo had a great shot. He did. He yeah. not as hot as Hicks, but he could place it anywhere he wanted to. Right? Exactly. A lot of people say that, that uh, Matt, uh, uh, Matty Menees was the, I mean. Uh, he was a sniper. Was the sniper. Yeah. Pure goal scorer. Pure yeah. goal scorer. I think uh, I was I was talking to Ray yeah, about this. Yeah, a lot of good snipers. Yeah, but yeah. Our, our sophomore year when uh, I think Maddie broke the school record with twenty six goals that year, and at the time, I mean, I'm biased, but I thought that was like one of the greatest goal scoring years I've ever seen. Yeah, you know, it was he was tremendous, tremendous. And how? And I still can't believe how he did it. <laughs> how's that? How's that, Donnie? Explain that. First time he come out, I don't know if it was his sophomore year or what. He, he, you couldn't tell whether the stick was carrying him or he was carrying the stick. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, he was, honest to God. <laughs> but he'd get the puck in the zone, and the next thing you know, he'd snap it off and it'd be in the net. And I'm saying, Jesus, I, I got to play this kid, but I'm, I'm like I was scared to put him out of the ice, but he'd get broken too. <laughs> what a competitor! I'll tell you, he and he could put it in the net, and he just he got better and better and better, and his confidence level and the whole nine yards was fantastic. You know, I, I saw a, I saw an article in the paper the other day last week because Maddie's assistant coach of the high school team now, and they they got a quote from him, um, and and he's coaching his players now shoot to score. Which seems like an obvious concept, right? But a lot of guys are just going to shoot and put the puck on net. Matty says, you know, when you shoot, shoot to score. And it's, it's a mental thing. And, and I think he must have had that just a natural instinct from, from when he was a youngster. And damn, the, the kid, the, the guy could score yeah. nonstop. Yeah. Who were some of the best who was goals? Some of the best goals? All the levels yeah. he played at, he scored goals. Yeah. Remember that one in uh, Davis? He scored two goals in seven seconds. Yeah. Down oh, yeah. three. I think he did in Beverly. Too, like a minute left, right? Was it a minute yeah. left, Charles? Something like that. Yeah. Scored the tying goal. Then he went to the goal right in his face, and he said, we're going to get another one, too. And about 10 seconds later, he got another one. That's, wow. a, true, that's a true story, Donnie. Maddie and I were living together, and he was yeah. telling me the story. He said he, yeah. he, he scored, and he looked at the goalie. He says, and I'm not done either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Big Poppy call, calling a shot right there. That's, right. that's Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Okay, let's talk goalies. Some of the best goalies, Gloucester goalies. Uh, who, the answer? Right. Yeah. I think Mike Mike Toronto Toronto was, Mike good. Toronto was very good. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. He was great. Um, one where, of the is, goalies, one of the goalies, where does Eddie Currier fall on that list? Who? Eddie Currier. Eddie was a backup goalie when I uh, when I played. <laughs> oh, you just you're trying. going you're going way back. <laughs> I love Eddie. Eddie Eddie used to pick up our fish with for JMP trucking. He oh was, yeah, just a great guy. Just a Joe, great, great guy. Joey. We had we had some good goals yeah, in our day. Goals. You know, and I, I think uh, I remember um, John Lafarda made the All Star team one yeah. year, and uh, Nick oh, Shalino may have also. But, I think you uh, did. But later on in the '90s, uh, Mike Interanti, I think, maybe set a new standard. Yeah, yeah well, you, have, uh, you know what I'd like to uh, ask you guys? guys. Wait a minute, we had more goals. Did Mark buy it? Oh, there you go. Yeah, as long as you didn't shoot from the red line, he was good. <laughs> shot from the red line, he didn't know it was coming. Yeah. Peter Sutera, so he did contact. Oh, yeah. was the was one of the best best athletes in uh, Gloucester High School, 
at the time and uh, played goalie was Tommy Conrad. Oh, yeah. 78, so, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Tommy Conrad. Eddie Curry says Eddie. John Burnett from 1966. Oh, yeah. Definitely. There you go. Wasn't born yet. Did they wear, did they wear goalie masks back then? <laughs> yeah. He had a face, the, the one that was molded to your face. Really? Yeah. Terry oh, Cheetah. Huh? Wow. Yeah. Piece of hot plastic. So I had so I had a uh, another question, and and the question was, who were some of the big time Gloucester hockey people that were involved, but not necessarily players? Maybe middle school coaches, announcers, bus drivers, rink managers, like but were always around Gloucester hockey, loved Gloucester hockey, but like weren't weren't players. Well, you had to go with Chuck for driving the bus. Absolutely. Yeah. He was fantastic. He was Chuck awesome. Madruga. Yep. Doc Enos was at every game. Yep. Oh, yeah, he was just always right next up. Um, our, 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 our middle school coach, Steve Novak. Novak was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yep. Great guy. Great coach. Tennis ball in the morning. Go for the tennis <laughs> ball. That was awesome. Hey, Donnie, remember uh, Tut Madruga? We couldn't leave for a game unless we had the Doors 13 tape for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I think we actually turned around in Beverly one time and went back to Gloucester to get the tape. Oh, boy. Brian Silvera stats. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, Nick, yeah. Nick oh. Brian Silvera. Brian yeah. Silvera, that's right. Yep. Yeah. Paul yeah. Curley says Paul, Paul Landry. Remember Paul Landry used to uh, run the rink? Paul Landry. How about what he did for you guys for the locker room? Remember, that's the first time we had our own locker room there. Had cubby yep. oh, yeah. guy, names on them. Yep. yep, we had carpet, chairs, everything. That was, was great. Right. That was we, awesome. we, we had individual, like director style chairs. Captain chairs. We thought we were king checks. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yep. We actually we're thought straight. we were good. I must have done wonders to your confidence. Paul Landry, we used to go to him and ask for, uh, in high school, I remember ice time, can we, yeah. you know, can we go yeah. skate for an hour? It's wide open. He used to make us wash the boards or the glass. Yeah. He's yeah. like, let's go wash the glass for an hour and you can go skate for an hour. He was great. Yeah. Right. I mean, we were so fortunate to have that rink. It was just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, it was, and it's funny because our season didn't start the day after Thanksgiving when tryouts started. It started, you know, a couple of months before with captain's practice, you know. And the, and the team started the mold then, right then. We didn't start molding after Thanksgiving. And uh, we we're so fortunate. And guys like Al Stewart who ran Al the rink there for a while. Exactly. The rest, the rest of the rink crew, they did take good care of us. Bobby all, Williams. All those years. Yep, Scotty Williams, his dad, Bob. And, uh, Tony, I remember this blizzard of 78, okay, everything was shut down. I think you cross country skied up the rink. You had the you had the keys. <laughs> he called everybody. Said, "Guys, if you can get up here, we can skate all day." <laughs> Next thing you know, the whole team's up there skating. It was great. We got there one way or another. I think Spicy and Mo uh, they skated there from Lansing, and wow. uh, that was a great time. We agreed not to divulge certain stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, they gave him the keys. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I should have mentioned uh, that if if you we have we have a couple of games we're going to play here, uh, some trivia. So if you share the podcast, I well uh, Jim, I should say Jimmy donated two uh, prize packs, one uh, two 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 tickets for Cape Ann Whale Watch, and uh, one four pack of Cape Ann Whale Watch tickets. Grab me one of these. And uh, and we're gonna do at the end of the podcast. We're gonna do a, a little trivia game. I also have a um, prize for anybody that shares the podcast right now on Facebook and types in "shared." Uh, I have a Tom Brady puzzle is one prize, and I also have an uh, unused uh, dash cam web uh, dash cam. So if you share the podcast, you type in "shared," you have a chance to win those. Uh, those two prizes, um, and uh, at the end of the game, at the end of the uh, thing, we have we have a couple of awesome uh, Gloucester trivia, Gloucester hockey trivia tr- trivia questions for you, um, Donnie. I want Donnie. I had a question for you as far as um, 
How do you feel about um, the athletes today playing sports year round? Like, the, you know, with the club hockey and stuff like that. Is that a good thing? Uh, I don't think so, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, if you looked at, and I, I it written down some things, and I think if you looked at all the teams and, and all the players that played on those teams, 95% of them were true athletes that played other sports. And that goes from the top player down to the bottom player. Um, there might have been maybe a slight percentage of those kids that were, were pretty good that only played one sport. And to me, you know, you, you're missing out. You, you're playing that one sport. You play all the different sports in high school. You, you're bonding with, with uh, friends that you're going to have such a much better experience in high school. That's the well. Isn't that the reason why we all played soccer? Our year there, didn't we play soccer because we had to get in shape for hockey? That's the only reason we right, did not enjoy the game of soccer. We played it to get shape for hockey. I played goalie because I don't like to run at all. <laughs> I don't like to run. You still do I played goalie and I ended up being an NEC All Star one year, and uh, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> we had, it was like by six of us, right? Russell played. Yeah, Stevie, Stevie played senior Phil, year. Me, uh, Scotty Phil Geary. Geary. Actually, Geary. Scotty Geary actually liked soccer. He was uh, good, yeah. So, yeah. But, you know, he's, he's a man in Squam. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you lost the guy. <laughs> but, but, yeah, you're uh, – so you. my point of view is just uh, play as many different things as you can. And you can, you can look at some of the uh, pro athletes – and they'll tell you the same thing. When when they were young, they they played different sport. Mahomes, there, the the QB there, he played basketball. I thought he was going to be a basketball player. Right. Uh, baseball you know, too. Yeah, baseball pitcher. Yeah, baseball yeah. pitcher. Baseball player. You know, and there's there's so many different things you can get yourself involved in that are positive and going to help you. I have a question about. So, how do you guys feel about the way the Bruins handled Zdeno Chara? Are you sad that he left? Are you happy that he left? Do you think that they did it tastefully? Would you like to have him back on the Bruins? Who wants to Who wants to chime in there? Depends what his contract is. What did Washington give him? Eight hundred. Eight hundred thousand. Something Something ridiculously low. Yeah. I was okay with them yeah, letting him go. I love Chara. I think he was an uh, unbelievable captain, leader. Um, but I think they just wanted to go a little bit younger and get those guys more developed. And he's on the back end of his career. And uh, I think it was a good move for him. I, yeah. I, I mean, I do. Once, once the playoffs start, you know, and, and the intensity picks up and the speed, he, he has a hard time handling that now a bit because of his, uh, you know, he's yeah. getting up there. He's lost a step or two. I mean, he he's phenomenal. He's a, he's a Hall of Famer and everything, but um, I'm, I was okay with it. Yeah, yeah I was good with it. I, was, I, thought, I think it was good for him because he wasn't going to – there was no room for him anymore on the Bruins. Too many I've never seen such down. a classy thing or such a – when he got his jaw, like, busted oh. and they wired his jaw shut and he kept playing in the playoffs – Oh, yeah. That was that was about as yeah that was savage nice. move as I've ever seen. Wow. Uh, like that, that's why that's why hockey guys are, are built different. Joey, I, I I totally agree, and I've got a very similar story that involves Jimmy. We're in the locker room before an industrial league game, and he stubbed <laughs> his toe on the on the bench. <laughs> Yet he laced him up, and he went out there, and he played his usual game. It was he powered fun. through it. Oh. Barry, what was that usual game? Yeah. <laughs> blue line and blue line. <laughs> he was always open at a blue line. He did everything he had. Yeah. Hey. Stick up. It didn't matter what blue line. He, he was the only it. defenseman on the far blue, go- blue yeah. line going, here, here, I'm open. open. Of course you're open. The play's over here. All right, I want, I want you guys each to give your – you can only – your your top Gloucester line – 
of and you out of all of the, the the of all the seasons, who would you put on the top Gloucester line? Oh God, that might be a question for Donnie. Wow, wow. we're putting you on the spot, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to put Matt. Yeah, that's a Matt, tough one. Matt is, Matt is in the middle for yeah. sure. Oh, you got to go with. Uh, I think uh, Daryl Seppala. Yeah. I'd go Maddie, Donnie, Ben Smith as one line, and then I'd go Daryl, Mario, and Paul Meniz as another line. How about defensemen? Coach, how about you? I'm all done. <laughs> you, Donnie, you could be a politician. <laughs> yeah. Donnie's, Donnie's de taping. Yeah. <laughs> you told me you were at the rink for six hours the other day. Uh, I get a few hours every day. <laughs> Donnie, do you still uh, do you still surf? I uh, a few times, yeah. I do get out there when I can. Wow, that's amazing. Is it the yoga? I mean, are you doing TB12 or are you doing... Oh, the- I got something new. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I taught my I taught myself Tai Chi over the uh, the the uh, quarantine. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you start drinking and eating subs like us. <laughs> <laughs> Those carbs are the devil. Those carbohydrates yeah. are the devil. Um, let me see here. All right, so do you guys want to do the trivia? Let's do the trivia. Trivia. All right. So this is for this. The trivia is f- the first question is for two tickets on Cape Ann Whale Watch. All right, Jimmy, you, Jimmy, you asked the question. All right, the uh, O'Malley Rink opened up in 1974. Gloucester High School played their first games there. Who scored the first Gloucester High School goal in the O'Malley Rink? And you, the, so the people that that are that are. Uh, the, our viewers can uh, comment right here. We're going to give you yeah. okay. So that's the question. So who scored? Who scored the first goal at Talbot Rink uh, when it first opened? No, Julie, you're not. Julie in Bernardi, you're not. You're not. A, you're not allowed to answer, Julie. <laughs> uh, okay, J- Jimmy, give the second. Jimmy, give the second one. And this is for four tickets for the Cape Ann Whale Watch. All right. And the second question is, when they first established Gloucester High School hockey, an artist scored the first goal for Gloucester High School hockey way back when. I'm not sure of the uh, the date, but who scored the first goal for Gloucester High School and who scored the 1,000th goal for Gloucester High School? Bill Francis said Tim Kane for the first question. That I don't think that's correct, though. No. You said he's an artist? Yeah, an artist in Rockport. Scored the first goal in GHS history. Hmm. Uh, I should have Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to give people We're gonna give people a couple minutes to answer right there. Uh, Hey Joe, Joe. While we're waiting, um, I, I I just want to see if there's any similarity here because I watched a Lipidia podcast from this past Sunday, and the trivia prize question or or the the the, the lottery prize was a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> and so how how does that stack up to Cape Ann Whale Watch tickets? Oh, Cape Ann Whale Watch tickets way blows it out of the water. Of course. Of course. All right, Joe. Uh, Joe, we got a we got a correct answer up on the screen. Okay, um, well, you can answer it. Well, the first hotter question too. Chris right. Nelson, Nelly. Don Stone from Rockport was the, the scored the first goal, and Barry uh-huh. Souza just answered the correct answer on the first question. Jay Sala scored okay. the first goal at in O'Malley Rink. All right, so so. Okay. Uh, so, Jimmy, you got to keep track of these because you're going to be handing out the prizes there. Yep, I see him right there. Oh, trust me. He sees Nelly every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Chris Nelson from the from the Elks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. 
We need the answer nice. to the second That's, part of that question now, Joe. Who scored the right, ask, goal? Ask, ask the second part again so people can try Who and Who scored get the 1,000th goal, the 1,000th goal for Gloucester High School? What year was it? In, in, at, at, at O'Malley? I, I'm not oh. sure of the uh, yeah, I'm not sure of the uh, year. It, there may oh. be a trick to the question. Actually, the year was 1974. 74. One thousand goal in seventy-four. Okay, while well, we're waiting, I have another, I have one no more idea. Thing. I have one more thing that we always do for for podcast virgins, and I didn't do it early. We usually do it at the beginning of the podcast. We haven't done it. So this is the we have Jimmy. You may have done this. I'm not sure, but we have the death row sub and the death row meal, and the parameters are this. You have to assume that you're on death row and the warden comes up to you and says, this is your last meal. You're going to get, I'm going to get you a sub from any sub shop. To any, uh, any, it has to be at a, a, a real place though. What's the sub and where are you ordering it from? We're going to start with Barry Clifford. Oh, jeepers, Joe. You could have given me a little heads up here. You just had um, one, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, well, if it's my if, if I'm on death row, I'm definitely going to cheesesteak bomb, and and I'm I'm probably going. Um, oh shit! I'm going a bomb from Virgilio's. A bomb from Virgilio's? Wow, interesting. Okay, great. All right, Jimmy, what do you got? <clears throat> uh, hmm. Give me eating a salad. Um. <laughs> With blueberry vodka. I think I'm going to go with the old trusty Destino's mushroom cheese steak. Mushroom cheese steak. That's, that's a very popular answer. Gappa, what do you got? Oh, Pat's Kitchen Cabaret. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's whatever, whatever the special is, I like them fresh. Um, no, <laughs> definitely going with Jesus. the cheese steak. What, you ever had the pizza there? It's unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable! The hidden gems. You made me snort. Uh, what you call it? Show in the morning there. Eddie Handelman. You're gonna have that on. Well, it's a hot spot. Um, tell I haven't left the house in five months. Yeah. What with a cheesesteak? Cool. Cheesesteak from where? Uh, it gotta be from Destinos. There you yeah. go. Yeah. There you go. True Gloucester guy right there. Stevie McDonald. What do you got? I I gotta go with these guys. A cheesesteak from Destinos. Wow. Okay. They're just racking them up. Ray. Yeah. Bomb steak from Destinos. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It could be a sweet. <laughs> All right. It. What it's do you got, Tony? I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm Destinos all the way and just a tuna sub. Tuna sub from, De- oh, from, from uh, Destinos. Very the classic great. tuna. That yeah. is a classic. All right. So the oh, second oh. part, the Show second part oh. is. Death Row Meal is the second part. What restaurant and what meal are you ordering? Barry, you're up. What? Death Row, what restaurant, what meal? Oh, boy, Joey. Um, it doesn't have to be Gloucester. It can be anywhere. But it yeah. has to be a restaurant. Well, you know, I've had this hankering for about 15 years to, to get uh, seafood fried Diablo at um, no, what's the place on New Street? Davio's. Oh, there you go. Never been there, but it's been on my bucket list for quite a few years. All right, Jimmy Douglas. Lots to land. Seafood risotto, hands down. Wow. <clears throat> Gappa. <clears throat> Boy. No hesitation. Wow. Back to the cabaret. Best slice in town. <laughs> I don't know. Boy, that's a tough one. <clears throat> I don't know what my favorite is. The tuna from Tono, maybe. I don't know. Tuna from Tono. All yeah. right. Yep. Good pick. Good pick, Mike. No kidding. Stevie. Ah, uh, um, I'd say probably maybe the Capitol Grill, filet mignon, some oysters on the side. 
There you go. Mm. Jesus. Lots of oysters. That's only an eighty dollar steak. <laughs> Six dollar oysters, why not? <laughs> Ray. I gotta go seafood marinara from the Blue Mountain with a tall glass of red wine. Uh, well, I don't know. If they, they'd probably they wouldn't be able to give you one because they're closed now, right? Yeah. I heard they might be reopening. Oh, that's a little inside of tip right there. Nice, very that's nice. One of my favorite restaurants right there. Good spot. Good spot. Donnie, what do you got? Now, one of my favorite places to eat and uh, go there quite often. Before the pandemic, obviously, but um, uh, Seaport Grill and uh, a Fisherman's Platter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. All right. The last question I'm going to ask all of you guys is from Nicole Schraft. What is your best high school hockey related memory? Barry. Joey, I was, I was hoping you were going to ask this question, and, and I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. We're in the locker room before the game. Winthrop Osagas is in the house. We got the doors cranking in the locker room. Coach Riles tells us to shut it down. He gives us his talk. He gives us the go. We exit the locker room doors. We bang a left. We go down the hallway towards the Zamboni. We're getting ready to take the ice. Zamboni comes off the ice. The rink workers clear the snow from the Zamboni. Roll out the rubber carpet. That siren from the rink, woo, right? It's screaming. The stands are pounding, screaming. There's electricity everywhere. Sorry, I'm getting animated. I know. And we take the ice. We take the ice. And you do a lap. You do a half rank lap, two or three laps. You're jacked up. You're going full speed. You're doing sprints. And it was just electric. It, 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 you, I've never felt any excitement like that in my life and and the comments are going to light me up about that statement but <laughs> it, it just just that that atmosphere of taking the ice with a full house and the energy and the excitement and the anticipation getting ready to drop the park uh what one, one of my best and most fond memories of, of all time that's awesome jimmy how about you yeah, I, unfortunately, I, I got to follow up with there. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to explain it. It's just the uh, the experience of stepping onto that ice. And, again, I keep referring back to the Winthrop game in 1978 when they were uh, defending state champs, and we came out and beat them New Year's Eve day, 5 to nothing. It was just the place was electric. And, like I say, it, uh, up until that point, that was the biggest crowd that was ever in the O'Malley rink. They were three rows deep all the way around the glass. They had stands on the other side beside the benches. Those stands were full, and it was just incredible. The place was electric. And that's one of my greatest memories. <clears throat> all right, Kappa, you're up. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, just, don't, just you know what? You know, I always think back. I, I couldn't skate for shit. Not everybody knew it. The Riles knew it. But every time there was, it was, there was some type of ice to be taken. Someone got hurt. Someone missed the shift or was missing it. For some reason, we had eye contact. And I got all the ice. It was uh, a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, that was pretty cool. Uh, how, about when you, how about when they dressed you up like the fishermen? Oh, Jesus. Well, that, that was uh, Paul. I think Donnie yelled at him and me for about a month. But... <laughs> Can you tell me? Remember, I was, I was throwing the pucks into the crowd at O'Malley, dressed as a fisherman. You know? Yeah, they were throwing them back. They were throwing them back. Get <laughs> <laughs> him off the ice. <laughs> Not one of the better memories. But no, you know, just 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 the feeling of overachieving with, my, with the boys that I grew up with and stuff is just you know memory alone. I've been playing with Cheesy since I was five or six. All these guys, you know, we all played. All those years, and that was the culmination for me. I knew I wasn't going anywhere. I was lucky to play uh, D1 once in a while. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, that's, that's it. Just, just Take, yeah, yeah you were through. a hell of a sentiment. Never yeah. lost a face off. Yep. That's right. God knows I had to have something, right? Stevie, what was your, what was your greatest, greatest hockey-related memory? Uh, I mean – I have to echo what Barry and Jimmy said. I mean, those guys are spot on right there with uh, 
coming out and, and uh, playing in front of the best fans in the in the whole conference, you know, packing the house. It was unbelievable. But I'll kind of think about the other thing I was thinking about is um, my sophomore, my sophomore year, the playoffs up in Lynn Arena. Those uh, two back-to-back games against Winthrop and Danvers were unbelievable. They were electric in two of the – I mean, two of the best games I've ever played in, those two awesome back-to-back games. games. And uh, <clears throat> we were underdogs and beat those guys. I think Winthrop, I think we beat them. We lost the first half of the season, the first game. The second half, we beat them. And then we, we beat them twice in a week, I think. And uh, they, they were a good team. And then we went up against Danvers, who beat us twice in the regular season. And uh, we ended up beating them for the title. And uh, that was uh, that was unbelievable. That was electric. So, those are the two memories uh, that I can think of, among, among others. How about you, Ray? Joe, I can tell you my favorite memory. I got it right here in front of me. Thursday, February 19th, 1981, we played Danvers in Lynn Arena and upset them. They had beaten us 4 to nothing and 4-1 to one during the season, and basically no one gave us a chance to beat them at all. And uh, we pulled off a huge upset. Wow. And I'll tell you, that's my favorite upset, uh, excuse me, favorite memory of all time right there. How big of how big of it how big of a boost was it was the like the the backing from the city, like the fans for you guys? Like did you guys feel like you were a team of destiny? Like did you like cause because that just there was something so special about those those games. Like it's from a I mean, I, I'm just, I was just a fan. I mean, it's just a kid as a, a middle school fan, but like that I just can't imagine what it must have been like for you guys. You know, to, to go to a rink, you know, away, away, a rink away from a melee rink, and and see a thousand, two thousand fans wow. from after it was unbelievable. Yeah. It really was. Like yeah. on a Wednesday night in January when it's you know twenty degrees out, and see that many fans show up to watch us play, it was, it was just unbelievable. So, and, and the thing I recollect the most is. Uh, you know, as a team, we had kids on the team from East Gloucester, West Gloucester, Lanesville, um, in the inner city, if you will, okay? And then you go up to the rink on a Saturday night, and all of our buddies were in the stands. It was almost like a melting pot of, of people. The kids from all over the city would congregate yeah. at one end of the rink. And for that one night, everybody was friends cheering right. us on. It was, it was an unbelievable memory. Absolutely. Uh, Donnie, we're going to put you on next. Uh, Eddie Currier has a question. I see it. Donnie about playing. (laughs) (laughs) I I put it right on the screen for you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, When uh, this was my junior year, we played uh, Needham in Boston Garden. We were in the quarterfinals of the state tournament. They were all everything, and they had this guy, uh, Robbie Fatorik. Uh, outstanding player, um, European born. I'm not sure quite where he was from, but he could do everything. And they were, they had a team full of studs. They had a great goaltender. Um, they ended up beating us two to one. I think Fatura got, uh, had two assists. I don't think he scored, but he, he may have, but, uh, we had a good team, and uh, the place was. To tell you the truth, I couldn't even remember how 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 many people were there when I when I played the game. It was where's the puck? Where's, what's my job? What am I supposed to do? And um, I played with uh, Gene Barrett and um, Dana uh, <laughs> Knowlton, and you know we had a pretty good line and. They split us up for that game, and you know, to try to keep up with uh, keep up with Needham's strengths, but put us back together in the third period, and we had a lot of chances, but we just couldn't get that tying one. Um, Donnie Lowe, Billy Brown on defense. Uh, you know, we had we had quite a team, but you ask about those. Uh, Memories and, and I, I remember that Danvers game and, and that was just after the um, wasn't that just after the USA won the uh, oh yeah absolutely and and 
and the people were chanting the USA. Well, we were up in we're up in Lynn Arena, and people were chanting <laughs> GHS. GHS. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It was bouncing off the walls. It was just going crazy. Yeah. And, yeah. and before the game, like I said, we had those meetings at my house. Well, I had a little truck at the time, a little uh, Dodge Dakota. We put about six or eight guys in the back of it, and we were riding up and down Main Street playing uh, Bruce Springsteen uh, uh, soundtrack. <laughs> and my, oh, my yeah. God. Just ourselves <laughs> pumped up for the game, and that was uh, quite the scene, I guess. Um, another another memory is kind of funny is, is I think it was that year that we were um, tied for champs with yeah. – Saugus for uh, league champs in the Northeast Conference. And Christy Serena and I were picked as the coaches to coach the All-Star game we played against the Cape Man League at that time. So we're in the in the locker room getting uh, – the kids are getting dressed and we're standing there, and all of a sudden Mike DiRuzioni comes in, and he gives the kids a, a pep talk. So I think – I don't know if Cheesy was there and uh, Pete Hickey and probably Maddie or whatever. And so he, he does his thing and he walks out and Pete Hickey looks over. He says, who was that joker? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, that was funny. It was classic. I'll tell you. <laughs> who was that joker? He says, oh, oh heck. <laughs> That's awesome. That is great. Yeah. Um, Donnie, I recall your uh, speech before the um, Danvers game, and you kind of stole some lines from Herb Brooks, if you remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically saying they're they're bigger than us, they're faster than us, they're better than us, and they beat us twice during the year. They'll beat us 99 out of 100 times, but not tonight. <laughs> well, Donnie, did you plagiarize that? I don't know, but it sounds like me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. We're going to do uh, – Hey, Joe. Did anybody, win, did anybody get that second question, Jimmy? No, I haven't seen it come up yet. All right. Ask it one more time. Go ahead and ask it right now. Who scored the thousandth goal for Gloucester High School hockey history? All right. And that, the thousandth goal, 1974. 1974. Okay, so if you share the podcast, I, we have two. We have two. Two, um, and you type "shared" in the notes in the, in the, on Facebook. You can win a uh, dash cam, brand new, never used dash cam, or a Tom Brady puzzle. Tom Brady puzzle. And is that uh, a? Is that a Tampa Bay puzzle or a Patriots? No. <laughs> no, it's a Patriots. Oh, who do you guys got? Who do you guys got in the Sunday in the game Sunday? We putting money on it. Uh, we, we, we're saying, so right now the spread is uh, the the Bucks are getting three points. So so do it with the spread. Who do you got? Barry, um, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for Tom all the way, um, but I don't like the I don't like the points. Uh, on the on the money, I'll, I'll take the Chiefs. Jimmy, what do you got? Mahomes looks unstoppable. <clears throat> I would I would agree. How about how about you, Gappa? I got the Bucks. You got the, the Bucks the, uh, the plus Chiefs, three. Yeah, Steve? the Chiefs are uh, they're missing two tackles right now, so who the hell knows what's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, Steve. Uh, it's a tough call. Um, I think I got to go with the Chiefs. Uh, it, <clears throat> he doesn't make any mistakes. There's, there's no turnovers. I think they get a chance, but I, I got to go with the Chiefs. I don't want the Chiefs to win, but that's what I think is going to win. I, I'm in the same exact camp as you. I, I, I think the Chiefs have so many weapons. Um, I don't. I want Brady to win, but I think the Chiefs are going to win. Ray, what do you got? Same thing, Chiefs. Too much speed. Too much speed, yeah. Hill and I mean and and uh, Kelsey, the, tight, the yeah the tight end. They're just freakish. They they they're just too too talented. The the, the defense. There's not enough uh, manpower to cover the you know to cover the field. Uh, Donnie, you got an opinion on this? That's you know you 
I'm going right along with you guys. I think it comes down to the Chiefs' offense against the Bucks' defense. And if, if the Bucks can hold them to under 20 points, the, the Bucks have a good chance. Uh, you know, I think Brady will be able to do. He can get get him some points, but it's going to be awful tough to hold down the Chiefs. Do you guys remember that game? Uh, was it last year? That I think it was. Might, I don't know if it was a playoff game, but like the Chiefs were down by like twenty points and or something like that, and might have been against Buffalo. I'm not sure. And they just like rattle and, and Mahomes. It's just like methodical. They just it was. It, it was all right. So uh, go. I'm going to ask uh, Pat Dalpiaz to let me know how many people shared the podcast. We're going to do the. We're gonna do the uh, the drawing right now. Hey Joe. Yes, sir. Can I add something before you do that? One hundred percent. Go ahead. I found, I found a program from nineteen eighty two. Yeah. All of Division One Eastern Mass, so actually the whole state. Division One hockey in nineteen eighty two. Here's the top fifteen scorers at the time. And I'm sure you guys will recognize some names. At the top, John Tiano, Winthrop, Mike yeah. Vino. Stoneham, Chuck Sullivan, remember that name, Donnie? Winthrop, Piano Sullivan. How about this name? You probably recognize her from the uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Tommy Glavin, Bill Ricca High School. Oh yeah, you guys know that? Yeah, wow, huge baseball player. Um, Johnny Carter, Boston Bruins. Wolverine Mass. What's that? From Wolverine Mass. Mass. Yep. 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 Bob Sweeney, Boston Bruins. Uh, let's see, Bob Jaworski, Tiano, Louis Finicaro, Saugus, I believe yeah. went on to play juniors in Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Alan Borbo, Acton Boxborough. Olympic player. Went on to 84 or 88 Olympic team, one or the other. Yep. Huh. Um, how about this name? Kevin Stevens, Silver Lake High School. <laughs> Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, that's nuts. I mean, there was there was some yeah. serious talent in Division wow. One back then, you know. And there, there was no Super Eight high school. I mean, uh, Super Eight tournaments. It was all Division One. Yep. Uh, so Tommy Barrasso yep. too. Tommy Barrasso. Yep. Yeah. yep. It's pretty impressive. That's- that is very impressive. All right, where am I at here? I gotta. Uh, just trying to find me. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the drawing right now for the two prizes. Uh, just bear with me for one second, guys. All right, here it is, the random generator. There was 14 people that shared the podcast. They entered random generator. Number five, number five, Pat, pick. Tell me who was number five, and for the second prize, number 13. Those are the two the two winners. The first person. Bloody. Oh, so Ed Currier, you, you, Ed Currier, you uh, have a pick oh. between the, between the Tom Brady and the uh, dash cam. Type in which one you'd rather have because you have the first choice. And if the other person, uh, oh, and Barry Souza is the second winner. So whoever responds first gets the first pick. Um, yeah. Bobble boy. So, so there you go, oh, guys. Absolutely any, any other uh, memories that you guys would like to share? You know, Joe, it, it, uh, so first of all, thanks for the uh, surprise guest with, with Riles here. Yeah. <laughs> I think, no, you know, and, and I think. Look, it's just nice you know, to hang out with a bunch of legends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, first of all, thank you to for Riles for not beating the shit out, of, shit out of us about this Legends tag, right? But, <laughs> all of us played first under Donnie and then with Donnie or against Donnie. And, and uh, you know, Riles, you're the best. Thanks, Barry. That's you great. Yeah. Yep. Second, uh, is, and to Paul, too, God rest yeah. his soul. Yes. God bless Paul. This was a uh, – this was a lot of fun, and and it lived. Uh, you know, I've been a, I've been a wreck all week, like because uh, because uh, I've never done a podcast where so many people stop me on the street, like like anticipating this. Um, you guys, you, the legendary teams that you guys were on, and the the joy that you brought to this town. Um, 
who has been has been unmatched in my opinion since before or uh, or after. And um, thank you guys so much for for joining us. Uh, and um, uh, if there's anything that you guys want to add in closing, uh, have at it right now. Uh, and uh, oh, uh, Joanne Wood asked, "Who got the thousand goals?" Hey, uh, I, I happen to have a sneak preview on the answer, but I do believe it's um, – His last name was Douglas, and it wasn't me. Stevie Douglas. Stevie Douglas. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's it. Thank you guys so much for, for joining us. This is a great time. I really appreciate you coming on. Joey. Have a good night, everybody. Joey, thank, thank you. Joe. Thank you. We appreciate thank it. Thanks, Joe.